Watch this guy try move to me at the gym. Checks absolutely nothing on his phone. Looks over at me being busy sorting my wrist straps. Makes a swift return. Sad lip. It's weird to me that the person who posted this video does not see the irony in this image, even though I'm sure the irony is probably blatantly obvious to you guys watching. But let's back it up a bit and explain what's going on. So a guy walks near a girl at the gym, looks at her, and casually asks if she is using the machine behind her, because sometimes at the gym, people will claim multiple machines or pieces of equipment at a time. The girl then proceeds to upload this moment in a TikTok video while showing his face, calling him a creep and basically accusing him of sexually harassing her, which is one of the worst things you can accuse a guy of, all because he looked in her direction and asked a question. Here's the irony. When he asked her this, she's in the process of filming a video designed to get people to stare at her butt, yet she's complaining about a guy looking at her. She appears to have deleted this TikTok account, but I found her alt account and it's full of this kind of content. By the way, did you ask the gym if you could film there and use their venue to upload this to a video platform that monetizes your content? Because I bet they have a policy against that. A lot of gyms I worked for have a policy against filming for commercial purposes without their consent. This gym here seems to be pretty mad about Amaranth doing that a few years ago. Huh? That's why I'm not filming anymore. You're not filming? No, I don't, have my, I don't have my camera set up today. Okay. Who's complaining? Like, just like, I just got three minutes to say. I don't, I don't have, have my camera set up. Are you going to say I can't be at the gym? No, I'm not saying you can't be at the gym, but like, the gym Yeah, I don't have my... No, I'm just, I'm not filming though. I'm just like Skyping my, my trainers. You aren't recording? I can literally see your phone stand and camera in the mirror behind you. She lies and claims that she's Skyping a trainer, but no worries because this next guy gets her. Hello. Excuse me. I know that a lot of people have talked to you already about this, but in regards to the filming and the live streaming, that it's, you're not authorized to do it. I'm not. Do do? I don't have my camera. You are live. We have your account open. We know you're live. Here. But it doesn't record anything. But you are live. It's, it's still the same. The same deal. It's, it's you're on social media. And you have other people around you. It's not possible. Bro, I opened up your stream and I can see that you're recording right now. That guy was on it. Amaranth then calls them racist because she's terrible at lying and leaves the gym. Caitlin. Yeah. I bet if I was some wealthy Saudi prince, they wouldn't want to kick me out. Also, maybe she does need to talk to a personal trainer because this is her push-up technique three or so years after the gym incident. Uh, seven, eight, nine. Jeez, that exercise mat was filthy. But it's good to see that over the years, Amaranth has clawed her way out of the oppressive gym environment and upgraded to her own home gym that for some reason has a ball pit? But on a more serious note, I haven't been to the gym in a while because I also have my own equipment at home, but I can't imagine that these people at the gym filming themselves for content aren't seen as any more than a giant nuisance by everyone else there, particularly when they try to dox and shame people who are doing nothing wrong. Watch this guy get angry when I do a handstand. Why is this guy's face in the video? All he did was watch you do a handstand while he was working out. She said he was angry, but how do you know he wasn't impressed? Doing a handstand is hard. Years ago, when I did go to the gym regularly, people would do wild stuff all the time and I would stare. I didn't know that made me a predator. Of course, not to say that there aren't guys who creep on women at the gym, because there certainly are, and I think it's wrong when guys do that. People at the gym are trying to get work done, and girls shouldn't have to be bothered with some guy's nonsense every time they want to work out. So there are women out there who have very valid reasons to be mad. But outside of that, these videos of women claiming they are oppressed because a guy happened to look at them while they were at the gym have been really trending lately. Like this one here. This is how to not approach girls at the gym. I hate this. I hate this. I hate when there's weirdos. It's me so uncomfortable. Feral, 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 like fucking feral.
Wait, was he even looking at you in that case on stair number two? It looks like he's just turning his head to the right. It's not like he's sitting there staring directly at you for like a minute straight. There's no way you could conclusively say that he's ogling you in that case. Also, if he is looking, how do you know he's not looking at you because you have a camera set up next to you and you're talking to yourself? If I were working out, that would distract the crap out of me. Mainly because I don't want to be on film when I'm just trying to work out on a piece of equipment that happens to be in the line of sight of your camera. There's mirrors everywhere, so it's like you can easily ca catch people. Act. Oh, this is nothing. Okay, so I'm trying to figure this out. Let's do some math. Let's say it is the case that he's staring. He is at such an angle that he really should only be able to see the back of her head. But then she says there are mirrors everywhere, which means if she can see him without looking back, there is probably a mirror directly in front of her. Now riddle me this, because she says this here. For those of you who aren't looking on screen, she put up text that said she's trying to avoid weirdos like the guy in the background. So if her whole purpose is to avoid guys like this, then why is she faced frontwards towards the mirror in a way where the whole taco can be seen during the hip thrust? It certainly can be seen from the camera angle she chose at multiple points in the video, which is weird because she made this post on Twitter saying that she doesn't want to be sexualized. Just for comparison, here is famous TikTok star Drew Afualo filming this same exercise where she filmed it from the side. This looks like a girl who is not shooting a video to be sexualized. Also, for comparison to the first girl I showed in this video that shot her deadlift for TikTok from the back, here's Drew showing a deadlift in a non-sexual way by filming it from the front. So maybe it's not you being a woman in the gym. Maybe it's the way you're holding the camera. Okay, we're going to move on to the 35 now. I want you to watch very carefully. Five ads, five pounds. And these are the great. Excuse me? You don't have to do that. It's okay. No, no, it's okay. I got it. Thank you, though. Oh, now he's done it. There's the misogyny. He tried to help her put a 35 pound plate on the bar. How dare he? Now, it says in the video that he walked over to get a cleansing wipe, and at that moment to the onlooker, I imagine that it looks like she's struggling to put a plate on the bar. I mean, that's a pretty reasonable assumption. She said in a video made around a month ago on YouTube that she weighs 100 pounds, which means that weight is more than a third of what she weighs, and in order to get it set up, she has to pick up the weight with one arm, lift the barbell up with the other arm, and place the plate onto the bar. Personally, I don't do hip thrusts, so I'm not super familiar with what a good number is, but I see Drew follow here doing over 400 pounds, while this girl Jessica is doing what looks like only 125 pounds. So this guy's assumption that she doesn't have a lot of strength and is probably going to struggle with putting that weight on the barbell is pretty valid. People help each other at the gym all the time. It's the courteous thing to do. It's not like he put that weight on and said, hey, can I have your number? Clearly he didn't try something like that because it would have been on camera. But her reaction to him trying to help her is to show his face on TikTok, accuse him of some of the worst possible things, and then say this. See what I mean? What made you think that you were going to come out looking like the good guy here? And I know I kind of alluded to this earlier, but this girl literally has an OnlyFans. Allegedly. Okay, the OnlyFans thing was apparently a joke she made, but she has a fan house, which sounds like it's basically the same thing. You know, for a girl who doesn't like being sexualized, she sure takes some strange photos. And for a paid subscription to her fan house, you can see extra progress pics. Those must be some pretty interesting progress pics because personally, I can't imagine someone paying to essentially watch me do the equivalent of showing off my trophy room. I see you can get ASMR content on her fan house as well because no one ever sexualizes that. Also, could you please keep all these people in the background out of your OnlyFans content? Exactly who is the predator here? Is this what people who go to the gym now are subjected to? How am I supposed to work out when I constantly have to worry about some e-girl filming me? This girl has no shame and straight up films in the locker room too. And then she tries to gaslight by saying people are subscribing to her for behind the scenes stuff and she doesn't do explicit content. Bruh, why do you think a guy would pay to see your air quote progress photos? You don't have to be nude to be salacious. I can't imagine any other reason why people would be there. I mean, you aren't lifting an impressive amount of weight, so they aren't there for fitness advice. You're basically a beginner in the gym. She's partnered on Twitch, of course, but Bronze and Apex Legends, so she's also a beginner there. 
Here's her filming herself snowboarding on the bunny slope. Again, unskilled. I see that she has a vision board that says she wants to be famous and make lots of money, but what actual skill does she have that would lead to that? Because if you're getting famous and getting paid on social media without any actual talent to show people, then you're basically doing Amaranth content or being a Pokemon style girlfriend simulator. Valkyrie is one of my biggest inspirations in content creation, and so is Pokemon. For the record, I wrote that line about Pokemon before I saw that clip. It wasn't that hard of a prediction. I see she has over 600,000 followers on TikTok, though in my professional opinion, not only is TikTok an incredibly difficult platform to monetize, but because of the way people interact with shorts, I think that one YouTube subscriber is equivalent to like 10 to 20 TikTok followers. And it shows because her YouTube and Twitch, which are the monetizable platforms, are very small. Of course, as always, do not harass or blow up this creator's comment section. But I can imagine that people who do the stuff that this girl Jessica did at the gym are everywhere now. And for one, that results in videos like this. That's what she said. And you know what? I, what was that? Okay. What, so I can't be old and work out without being made fun of? Gee, I sure am not being discouraged from going to the gym at all. Second, did you ever hear the story about how the boy cried wolf? Thanks to people like the girls I've shown in this video, women with legitimate problems with creeps won't be believed, and now those creeps can use this social media drama to accuse said women of lying. Kind of like what Me Too did. Because so many liars in that movement were promoted, now an abuser can just claim they are being falsely accused, and tons of people will believe them. Thanks, Me Too. Third, and on that subject of Me Too, I bet one of the results of these women wrongly accusing men of being creeps is situations like this. Hey. Gee, wouldn't it be nice if there was a man around to help her? How many guys who would have helped are now just going to say, nope, I'll let someone else do it because they don't want to be called a creep on TikTok? Now, I couldn't find anything, but I tried to do some research to find out the context of this situation because I don't think it's all that different from the previous videos that I showed. Yes, this situation was unfortunate, but why did it happen? Why was she filming this? If she was filming herself to check her form, then why does she have the camera angled behind her and pointed at her butt like the first girl I showed in this video? Why is she wearing nude colored leggings that make it look like she's not wearing pants? Why is she backwards on the squat rack? It would be much easier to see her form if she was filming while facing the correct direction. Could it be that she's ignoring obvious safety procedures like using safety bars because she's filming air quote content for TikTok? I don't know, but literally all she has to do is drop the weight behind her. That's what bumper plates are for. Now I saw someone in the comments of this video saying that these particular bars have awkward screws or something that can hurt if you drop the weight behind you, so the proper way to drop it is to drop it forward, preferably onto safety bars. But I digress. Why was this woman lifting, by her bad form, what was obviously too much weight for her, without knowing any of the safety procedures that keep you from getting hurt on a dangerous lift like a squat? Anyway, outside of this, I'm tired of girls saying, I don't want people paying attention to me, while at the same time they engage in every attention-seeking behavior possible. If you want to be invisible at the gym, then stop dressing like you're going to the club. Like this girl here. You can still look fashionable without drawing a ton of attention to yourself. All these girls are saying, oh my god, these creeps are staring at me. Well then, stop going to the gym in provocative clothing. You guys are literally this Simpsons meme here. Getting back to Jessica, the girl who made this stuff go viral, at least she did apologize in this twit longer. That's more than a lot of these kinds of people do. But the apology really misses the mark like a lot of social media apologies do, which is, where is the restitution? Let's say you stole $100 from someone and got caught. Saying, I'm sorry, is not good enough. You need to apologize and then pay back the $100. She tried to damage this guy's reputation in a pretty awful way. Where in this twit longer does it say that she's going to make an effort to personally pay him back for what she did? Most of what I see is her doing damage control and trying to save her own public image. Which is why at the bottom she says, I don't have an OnlyFans. It really shows that she's more concerned about herself and not the guy she harmed. Where is the evidence that she learned something in the form of her saying, hey, maybe I shouldn't film strangers in the gym without their consent. Which is really the problem with this kind of stuff because people like Jessica are going to keep others out of the gym. That's a problem because the gym is a great place to self-improve. Also, why aren't gyms enforcing a no-filming policy? That seems like a pretty easy way to fix this problem. 
We have decades of history of people figuring out how to accomplish a workout without filming everything. But as I said, the gym is a very important place to self-improve, not only for your health, but also because your appearance matters. I don't know what they're telling kids these days, but when I was young, they would tell you that 80% of your job interview is your appearance. To make that point even further, I did this channel for more than four years without showing my face. I do a live stream on camera, and I literally have had multiple people in the comments say that they now see my opinions as more valid because I take care of my appearance. Yeah, that's kind of dumb, but it is reality, which is why I lift weights and study fashion. Also, on that note, in terms of dating, I know a lot of people like to misquote that OK Cupid study from a bunch of years ago and say roughly, men rate most women as average or above average, whereas women rate most men as below average. I looked at that study a long time ago, and I don't think that's what the data actually says, but let's pretend it does say that because so many people say it does. Recently, I was talking with Brittany Venti, and I think she brought up a good point. Statistic of men rating women on OkCupid, and men will rate women higher in attractiveness than women will rate men. A lot of men will take that and try to demonize women, but have you guys considered that men are ugly? Some women will spend entire days, and this is commonplace, to improve their appearance. They put in a lot of effort to look pretty. It is hard work to figure out what colors look good on you, what hairstyle looks good on you, skincare routine, appointments for your hair, nails, skin. They didn't just wake up that way. And yet these guys who literally roll out of bed and scratch their balls expect to look just as good as women. When she said this, I laughed because it's such an obvious interpretation of the data that no one seems to have thought of. Women take care of their physical appearance on average way more than men do, so of course they're going to be rated as more attractive on average because more of them are maxing out their appearance. Now, if there's one thing that I've learned from feminism, it's that there's a lot you can do to make yourself look worse than you should. Not working out is one of them. Fortunately, some guys with massive platforms of normal people like PewDiePie are making working out look cool. He recently posted a video of his followers showing gains that they got because they were inspired by his workout journey that he's been showing over the past couple of years. Mr. Beast also said that he now hits the gym in a Lex Friedman interview. This is all great, but I think a major sticking point for people when it comes to working out is not being instantly good or not looking like Hollywood actors or models all the time. First of all, everything in Hollywood is fake. A lot of actors are on roids or they don't maintain that body shape all the time and only have a six pack when they do scenes with their shirts off. Here's James Marsters talking about how he asked for a warning of several months before he had to do a scene on Buffy with his shirt off. I went to, I went to Joss and I was like, Look, if you ever want me to take my shirt off, can you not Mark Belukas me and just give me some give me some lead time? Because I can give the difference between having a body that looks good in a t-shirt and the, the body that looks good without one is just a mountain to climb. So can oh, you yeah. just give me a little time to get ready? And and he goes, Oh, well, I'm glad we're having the conversation because uh uh get ready over the summer because next season you and uh you're gonna fall in love with Buffy. These people aren't maintaining the shape all the time, and you don't have to do that to look good, and you don't have to have massive lifts to look better than you do now, or to get some strength. As for me, I did a little weightlifting in the past, but never took it seriously until recently, so I started out at pretty much nothing. Six months ago, my deadlift was 75 pounds, my squat was 65 pounds, and my bench press was 55 pounds, and I could barely do a few reps at those numbers when I first started out. Now my deadlift is 205, I squat 165, and I bench 135. I know those aren't the highest numbers in the world, they're basically rookie numbers, but if you look at the total gains, I'm closing in on three times stronger than I was when I started, and now I constantly feel like the intro scene to a superhero movie where they first get their powers. Just for clarification, these are numbers I can lift multiple times. I don't currently know what my one rep maxes are, but I think the way you actually achieve those high levels of athleticism or high levels in any skill is to just be proud of the small improvements. You don't need to deadlift 500 pounds to be happy. I was super happy going from a 75-pound deadlift to an 85-pound deadlift, and I kept myself happy by being proud of every 10-pound increase until I hit 205. Of course, don't be an idiot, your form matters, and don't increase the weight too fast. A lot of people like to forget their form, only focus on number, and that's how people get injured. Educate yourself on the science and proper form. Also, learn how to diet properly and discipline yourself to get 7-8 to eight hours of sleep a night, or your muscles won't grow. However, the cool thing about this and about skills in general is that once you have achieved a certain level of success, that level is very easy to maintain, so the more you work on these things, the easier they get. The hard part is getting the 300-pound squat. Once you're at that number, keeping it is easy. And once you get to that level, you can decide if you're fine where you are or if you want to put in the work to get more. 
That's the kind of mindset you need to achieve these long-term goals that take months or years to accomplish. Otherwise, you won't have the patience. Anyway, thanks for watching. Follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you in the next video.